Welcome to my YouTube channel Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival. I'm Glenn Vickery and today um, I was going to go over teaching a little bit about um, finding true north. Okay. Um, so this video is specifically for the um, uh, southern hemisphere um, but uh, I would think that in the northern hemisphere you just do the uh, do the opposite okay so if we're finding north um, then in the northern hemisphere you'd be finding south and so on but uh, for some of these things it'll be uh, based on um, the stars um, uh, or the uh, sun the moon and things like that okay so uh, uh, let's uh, get into it okay so uh, the first thing is if you don't uh, know what true north is uh, it might pay to have a look at my um, last video uh, on navigation and um, I sort of cover over very briefly uh, True North, uh, Magnetic North and um, um, and so on, okay? Um, but this one's specifically about True North. So, how do we find True North? Uh, or what's the importance of finding True North maybe first? It before we go looking for it. Finding true north um, uh, will help us to find uh, true east, true south and uh, true west through um, the uh, phrase never eat sausages wet. Um, so it's really important to know direction. Okay, Otherwise if you don't know direction um, that you're heading in you could just be walking around in circles. Okay, And um, you don't want to be walking around in circles, uh, either out in the bush or in the desert or wherever you are. You want to be um, heading in uh, the direction that you want to head in. And um, us humans, uh, we tend to have a uh, bias in directions. And what that means is that if you were to go onto, say, a football field or rugby field, something like that, um, stand on the line... Uh, close your eyes and walk in a straight line you're going to find that you're going to either um, drift off to the right or you're going to drift off to the left and you're going to have a bias okay whether it's a right hand bias drifting off to the right or a left hand bias drifting off to the left and even when you um, when you're in the bush um, or the jungle or anything like that you're surrounded by plants and trees and vines and everything else you can't generally get a specific direction and you will have if you, whatever your bias is you're going to start walking uh, on that bias if you're not following a compass bearing or something like that or you know direct you can figure out direction and um, eventually over a long period of time you're going to tend to uh, either walk in a complete circle or somewhat of a circle. So um, being able to get your bearings um, on a direction of travel and then maintaining that direction is extremely important unless you want to keep uh, doing circles and whatnot. So uh, if you didn't have a compass, um, you're going to have to find um, your bearings using other things like um, the during the day you can use um, the uh, sun okay at night time it's a little easier depending on the weather you can use the stars or the moon um, if it's overcast um, well you're you can only do so much okay um, so anyway let's get get into it Let's do uh, daytime first, alright, let's do the daytime first, so um, let's say for instance uh, we're using the sun, let's make the sun here, and remember this is for the uh, southern hemisphere, okay, let's say that's our sun, alright, there's our sun, and we, what we would want to do is, um, if you're wearing a watch, okay, um, you want to be facing your watch, uh, let's say this is your watch here, 
we want to point, this is for the southern hemisphere remember, you point your 12 o'clock directly at the sun, wherever the sun may be, okay? And let's say that uh, it's um, 9 o'clock in the morning, okay, so it's 9 a.m., so here's our 9 a.m., all right? That means that halfway between the 9 and the 12, which is in that direction, would be true north, okay? So halfway between the 9 and the 12 would be about here, all right? Which means if we head it, point it out into this direction, this would be true north, all right? In that direction there. Okay, it's as simple as that. If we were, if it was say three o'clock in the afternoon, okay, three p.m. or fifteen hundred hours, and we pointed the twelve at the sun, okay, um, halfway between the twelve and the three would be true north would be out in that direction okay so wherever whatever the hour is during the day um, halfway between that and that would be um, true north all right so let's do another one let's say it was 11 o'clock right in the morning halfway between 11 and the 12 would be there okay if we point that out to there um, and that direction would be true north. Okay, and so we'd head that way if we wanted to head in a true north direction. Obviously, if that's true north, out to the right, out in, um, in, in, in that direction there, would be true east. Okay, going the opposite direction. Can't sort of see there. But going in the opposite direction there would be true south. And going in that direction there would be true west. Okay, or heading in a westerly direction. Okay, so that's um, how we find uh, um, north, south, east or west using um, uh, the sun for true north okay now remember true north um, is different than magnetic north okay so this is not magnetic north this is uh, true north okay all right okay so it's quite easy but very important to um, to know all right Especially if you don't know the area that you're you're in very well, you want to know bearings. Now let's say let's do another one for night time, uh, or let's do one for night time. Um, one of the uh, easiest uh, star uh, constellations in the in the uh, southern hemisphere is is called the Southern Cross. Okay, and the Southern Cross uh, basically let's imagine that's one star. That's another star, a star there, and there's a star there, okay? So it looks like a cross, okay? Here's our cross here. Yeah? Now there is another little star. You'll see another little star on the right-hand side. It, it's around about there. It's not, it's not as bright though, okay? Um... And there's another star, uh, well, that's the uh, Southern Cross. Now, what I like to do is, when it comes to the actual cross itself, I like to put, uh, I don't know if I can do it, when I, when I look into the uh, sky, okay, um, and I point my fingers up towards the sky, I'll try and do this with the camera, uh, trying to get it around here. When you point it up towards the sky, you 
if you hold your three fingers out, you will just get three fingers in that between those two points there. Okay, you see the, t the top of the cross there, the top of the cross there, and the bottom of the cross down here where I'm pointing the pen. If you've got your three fingers and you hold them up, hold your arm out stretched, you'll just be able to see those um, two pointers. Your fingers will fit into them. Okay, so I'm just going to come back here a little bit and zoom out. So what I mean by that is when you're looking up into the sky and you can see what you think is the Southern Cross if you hold your just three fingers and hold them up like that in the air up up to the cross the long part of the cross you'll you'll be able to just fit these three fingers into the cross and you'll be able to just see the top top uh, star and the bottom star when you're holding your three fingers up okay um, now that's very important because um, there's a number of when you look into the up into the sky into the stars there's lots of different stars up there and there's lots of what I like to call false crosses okay so if you look up there you'll see a bunch of stars that look like crosses and they are crosses uh, but they're not the Southern Cross, okay? And so the Southern Cross is the only one that when you point your fingers up, you'll get three fingers in it, right? And, and as soon as you see that, um, that will help you to confirm that what you're looking at is actually the Southern Cross, okay? And then I'm going to show you a few other things to 100% to, um, uh, to identify that you are actually uh, looking at the Southern Cross. Because if you go off one of the false crosses, you, you're gonna, you, you could end up going in the wrong direction. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is actually try and, trying to find true south. But anyway, um, that will help us to find true north. So let's get back to this here. So that's really important. Okay, the three fingers between the top. So you'll get three fingers between here, this star, and this star. All right, three fingers. All right, when you hold them out, your arm stretched, fully stretched out. Okay, you'll get three fingers, and you'll just be able to see that star, and you'll just be able to see that star. Okay, the next one is, you've got an, the other two stars here that make up the cross. And... This one here, if again, if you hold your arm out and extend it, this one here, between here and here, you'll be able to fit in two fingers. Alright, two fingers. Alright, so you'll be um, outstretching your hand in mid-air. And I'm not gonna not gonna briefly do it, it's quite hard trying to get this on here. But you get the picture if you're like your arm was fully outstretched, like so, you'd be able to just fit those two fingers into, and you'd see the two stars on either side. Okay, that's quite important. So the next one is, <coughs> that we would see, let's pull this out a bit. So that's the Southern Cross there. Now, on top of the Southern Cross, we have what we call uh, two pointers, okay? And the pointers uh, basically come out of the top of the cross here and be around about, oh, let's say about here. All right, and there'll be another one about here. St two stars. So these are very bright stars, these four, one, two, three, four, to make up the cross. And there's another two bright stars out here that are called the pointers, and they're quite bright as well. Now the distance between the two pointers here is also two fingers. Okay, so that's also two fingers there. And the distance between the two pointers 
and the Southern Cross here, okay, is four fingers. All right, four fingers. So I find it quite easy to remember. There's two, two here, two here, two here. So two fingers there, two fingers there, three fingers there, four fingers there. So I go the first two, second two, then the, th the, th the third one is three fingers, and the fourth one is four fingers. So I go one, I go one, two, three, and four, okay, um, for the fingers. So once you confirm that you actually have the Southern Cross, and you're not getting one of the false crosses, um, you can start to uh, find um, uh, true south using the, um, so I'm just moving to grab my pen that rolled down the table. Once you confirm that you have actually the uh, true southern cross, we can start to go through and find um, true south. Okay, so how do we find true south using this method? What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make this a little bit uh, smaller. I'll just zoom this in for those that want to see a little bit better. <sighs> Trying to do this camera is a little bit, but hopefully that's a little bit better for some. Okay, so. Um, Let's rub that part out. And let's see how we actually use the Southern Cross now. Try and do it over here. Make that it works. Let's go. In fact, let's do the stars in red, eh? Let's go here. Uh, Yeah, you can see that. That's one. Let's go this way a bit. There. Do our pointers. So hopefully you can see those. Yep, cool. All right. So we've got our um, uh, first two. All right. Second two fingers, next one is three fingers, and between the pointer and the actual uh, the two pointers, these are what we call the pointers up here, all right, and the actual cross is four fingers. Okay, so we confirm that we've got the right southern cross, the right constellation. The next thing we do is um, we join up, we do a line from the uh, Southern Cross, going out the bottom of the Southern Cross, we do a line coming out this way, like so. And we get between the two pointers here, the middle, which is about there, okay? And we do a line coming straight out of the, uh, the two pointers, coming down until it hits there. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out a bit. Alright, so we come down until we hit the uh, here. Okay, and then from here we draw a line straight down like so to the uh, land. Okay, so imagine this is the land, here's the hills and everything else. Right, there's the hills. Okay, you're looking out, you can see all these hills and everything. Right there, where, where the, um, that line that comes straight down hits the, uh, the land, that's true south. Okay, so let's call that. I'm just going to do it over here. If we came up a bit higher, alright. Alright, this is true south. Alright, true south, okay. So, 
Now that we've got true south, all we have to do is go the opposite direction to true south and we would have true north. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a bit here. Right, so let's imagine that I've found the um, Southern Cross and I've done the... Um, joined up the pointers with the Southern Cross in the sky, did a line down to find True South. And let's just imagine that True South was this way, okay? All I've got to do then is directly behind me, all right, would be True North, okay? So if this was True South, all right, all I've got to do is spin around, and now I'm facing True North. Okay, so that would be true north direction. So if I wanted to head north, I could head that way. If I wanted to head east, I'd just head out to my right. If I wanted to head south, I'd spin back around and I'd head south. And if I wanted to head uh, west, I'd head out um, the other way. All right? So once we find true south, we can find true north, true east and true west. All right? But in this case, we're trying to find true north. So all we do is do an about turn, okay? Or do uh, a turn 180 degrees from true south. So we just simply spin around, okay? Um, for those that have been in the military or the police or um, any other service where you do military or drill, okay, or marching, you just do an about turn, all right? And um, you'll uh, be facing in the direction that you need to face. Okay, where are we? Alright, so that's um, the uh, Southern Cross. Now, I don't believe that in the um, Northern Hemisphere they can uh, see the Southern Cross. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you guys have the uh, Northern Star anyway that you guys can find North. Okay, so this is for the Southern Hemisphere. But you never know when you're going, you may end up coming into the Southern Hemisphere. Right, travelling or whatnot. Okay, so you can use this sort of stuff not only um, out in the bush. You can use it when you're in a city. Okay, if you're in a city and you don't know, uh, you're in the Southern Hemisphere somewhere and you're, you're, you're in a city and you don't know your way around uh, to get your bearings okay if you get lost or whatever you can see the southern um, cross all right um, you can you can get your bearings and you can find out the direction that you're heading rather than be completely not know what direction you're heading in okay all right um, what's the next one uh, the moon okay so in the southern hemisphere, well, every, as everybody knows, the, the, the sun rises in the east approximately and sets in the west, and um, the moon does the same thing. The moon's, moon rises in the east and sets in the west. Um, and we can also use that to help us to find um, uh, north in general. Okay, for example, let's just go back to the uh, sun, all right? So let's say this is our this is our our land here, all right? It's a bit weird, eh? Sort of looks like funny water there. Let's let's do our land. Let's do this is our land here, okay? All right. Now the sun. Let's say this is our sun here. The sun rises in the east. In an easterly direction, it's not it's not one hundred percent in the east directly. Okay, it's not true east. It's just in an easterly, northeasterly direction. So, if that's the east, all right, and it always rises in the east, all right, and that means it comes up in the east, all right, comes up in the east. And it will go over and it will set in the west okay the sun will come down and it will set 
or go down in the west. Right? If we see where the sun is coming up, we know that if let's say that we are standing, let's say we're standing on the top of this mountain here, right? That's us there. If we see the sun coming up, we're in the southern hemisphere, we see the sun coming up in the east. That means that we know that direction is easterly direction, which means that direction up here would be north, okay? And that direction would be west. And obviously the other direction would be south, okay? So we don't even need to use a watch, okay, to, to, to find uh, north, east, south, west. Normally we would use a watch when the sun was up and around this area here, okay? Once the sun gets to approximately 12 o'clock noon, let's say 12 o'clock noon, the sun will approximately be around about here. When the sun gets to 12 o'clock noon, we already know that that's north. That's a northerly direction. We're exactly where the sun is, and we're heading north, okay? Um, so if we, the sun at 12 o'clock, we look up, we see the sun, that's north. Give or take, general, okay? It's true north, all right? Um, and it's pretty damn accurate. So if you see the sun at 12 o'clock and, and walk in that direction, you're heading it walking, in a true northerly direction. Okay, so that, that's another way of finding north using the sun. Um, much easier if you don't have a uh, watch. Okay. Um, there is another way of using that same process if we have um, a stick on the ground. Okay, so let's say we put a, uh, using the stick method, Okay, uh, again, it's quite simple really. If, let's imagine that the sun is coming up from the east over here, okay? Um, and we had like a stick here. We put a stick in the ground, there's our stick. When the sun is shining, it's like this way. The sun is shining, the light. It's going to cast a shadow when the sun hits this hits this light, or that stick there, it's going to cast the shadow in that direction. Okay? And because we know that the sun is rising in the east, it's going to cast the shadow, when it's rising in the east, into a westerly direction. So this would be, this direction here would be west. Westerly. Okay? Especially if it first comes up in the morning, it's coming up in the, in the, in the, um, east, it's going to straight away point this to the west. So from there straight away we can figure out north. North would be, uh, if that was east here and this was west, straight away we can figure out north and straight away we can figure out south. Okay, it's that simple. As the sun comes up and it starts getting to, I don't know, around about 11 o'clock, right, 11 a.m. and it's up here, all right, we'll take away that one. It's now casting a, um, the, the sun's rays are hitting the stick and it's casting another shadow down, yeah, it'll be about, down about there. Okay. And so, again, we know that it's 11 o'clock. That means that it, it's only got about another hour before it gets to here, around this area, alright? At that point, at 11am, we know that the, the, the sun is still moving in this direction. The next shadow is going to be facing this way. Okay, so from all that, we can find south. You know, we can find north, we can find east, we can find west. It's, it's pretty simple when, when it comes to things like that, okay? Um, people do the old, uh, oh, this is the east-west line and the south line and the north line. You don't have to do all that. It's pretty simple. As long as you know that the sun is coming up in the east, the shadow is going to be facing to the west. And when the sun's on the western side, 
it's going to be facing uh, from the western side it's going to make the shadow of the stick when the sun is coming in from this direction hitting the stick the shadow is going to be coming out this side okay of the stick all right which would be an easterly direction okay anyway let's um I don't want to go too much into that method there's lots of videos out there on um, the stick method to finding um, true north and true south and everything else now another one which is, 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 is probably the main one that I use at night time um, if I'm not using the southern cross or I'll use it in conjunction with the southern cross is um, the moon okay now the moon let's do our moon up here you look up up in the sky and you'll see uh, if you see the moon like this try and do a moon All right there's our moon yeah sort of looks like a banana but that's okay now if we see the moon the moon also rises in the east and it sets in the west in the southern hemisphere so it comes up in the east goes this way and it sets in the west again it's not actually a true easterly direction it's sort of more of a northeasterly direction anyway when we see the um, sun uh, the moon in the sky I would say probably 95% of the time when we look at the moon in the sky we can tell where north is how do we do this when we see the sun in the sky, uh, the moon in the sky, let's say this is the land here. Let's say that's our land. And we look up into the sky and we see the moon. Let's say the moon is up over there. There's our moon. What we do is we use the crest of the moon to find true north. And the crest of the moon is this part here, between here, that part, and this part. And what we do is we draw a line directly through the top of the crest, down through the bottom of the crest, and we go all the way down until we hit the land. And right there, this part here, is true north right there all right that's true north so if we wanted to head in the northerly direction we would head towards that point to a true north direction okay very very simple this is a method that not many people know or many people use um, and uh, I, I use it all the time okay I, I really like to uh, um, the more you more you practice and and, you, and what you do is whenever you're out and you see the moon you you do it okay you do it you have a crack at it all right next one is let's imagine the moon is up over I don't know let's do it like that you're looking into the sky and you can see the moon okay and what we would do is we'd grab the moon there We'd go across the crest of the moon, we'd come all the way down, we'd hit the land, okay, and right there is true north. So if we head in this direction, we would head in, to this point here, we'd be heading in a true northerly direction using the uh, moon. So sometimes at night time, um, Sometimes you can't see the Southern Cross. You can't see certain constellations that you're using to find um, uh, your direction. So if you can't see a constellation, you might be able to still see the moon. If you can't see the moon, sometimes you can see a constellation that you're using. Okay. Um, other times, um, if you can't see any of them, right, and you don't have a compass, Right, then, uh, and you don't know just the direction from uh, general knowledge, then you're generally in trouble. Okay, if you need to, if you need to walk, you need to head somewhere, and you don't know which way you're going, you're, you're generally in pro uh, have a problem. 
Okay. Now, um, I'm going to show you another way. Now, this might be a little bit complex for some because um, I haven't actually taught about mag uh, magnetic uh, variation or magnetic declination. Um, but for those that do know about magnetic declination or magnetic variation, um, I'm going to quickly explain it, uh, how to find true north on that as well. Now, let's say that uh, we are, um, have, um, and for those that um, are going to continue to watch these videos, I will go over magnetic um, declination or magnetic, otherwise known as magnetic variation. I will go over that anyway, so you can always come back to this video when you've learned about magnetic variation and um, or magnetic declination. You can come back to this and it'll make more sense to you. So let's say we have a compass. Okay, we're working off a compass this time. Now a compass doesn't find true north. It doesn't find true north, it doesn't find true east, it doesn't find true south, and it doesn't find true west. What a compass does is a compass finds magnetic north, okay? So let's just imagine that we have a compass here. I'm just going to put it over here. We have a compass. And let's do this one and say, um, let's just stick away from the uh, degrees or mils or whatever. And let's just say that the compass needle, magnetic needle, is pointing in this direction. Okay, so that's the magnetic, that's pointing to magnetic north. So I'm just going to do da, 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 pointing that way. Okay, that's magnetic north in that direction. The black other end of the needle, which is there, that's pointing this way. All right, that would be magnetic south. All right, now. For those of you that understand this sort of stuff, to find true north, which might be important depending on what you're doing, all we do is if we had an easterly declaration of, let's say, I don't know, 21 degrees. Let's write that up here. An easterly uh, declaration, I'm just going to say D, uh, of 21 degrees. Okay? That means that um, the magnetic needle is going to point 21 degrees east or to the right of true north. Okay. Now, because we understand this, what we can actually do is we can uh, back engineer that okay, to find true north. So what we do here, let's say this here magnetic needle is pointing 21 degrees east in an easterly direction okay um, of true north all we need to do is if we know that uh, how can I do this um, uh, all we got to do is if we know that that's 21 degrees, all we have to do is go back this direction, that way, to the left, okay, 21 degrees, and we're going to hit, let's say this was, uh, I'll do it with a blue pen, all we'd have to do is go to the left 21 degrees, in this direction, okay, and that there would be, in that direction would be true north. Okay, true north. All right. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is let's um, bring the camera up to here, and I'll try and explain that through a demonstration um, as best I can. So what I'm going to do is I'll go. Uh, let's say I am facing in a true north. Let's say I'm facing this way as true north direction towards you. That's true north, okay? And we're working on, let's just work on degrees because it's a little bit easier for pe most people use it. Out to my right hand side, so this is true north, 
Out to my right hand side would be true east, pointing this way. Um, and that would be 90 degrees. Okay, if I half this between here and here, half of that would be 45 degrees. Okay, and if I half that again, that would be 22 and a half degrees, approximately 21 degrees. So if this is true north, this would be magnetic north. Okay, so if I had a compass that was pointing in this direction, all I would need to do is add on the extra degrees or take off the extra degrees of which is 21 degrees and go that way. Okay, so I could go an extra 21 degrees would be there, that would be 45. An extra uh, 45 degrees would be there, would be the 90 degrees. Which, so this would be the 90, okay. And of course if that's, I go again, 45 is half of 90, 21 is... Um, uh, 22.5 is the half of the 45, okay, so approximately 21 degrees, which is the magnetic uh, north pointing that way, and this way, now, again, I'm pointing to true north again, okay, so we can back, let's just say back engineer, looking at the degrees, breaking them down, um, so we could use a compass, so if my compass here was pointing that way to magnetic north and I knew the compass was working on 21 degrees easterly direction okay I know if I just turn slightly this way okay to the left I'm pointing towards true north okay for those that had a westerly de declination for example you're in a part of the world where it's got a westerly declination um, and your compass was pointing this way um, let, let's, let's, let's go back to the easterly so we don't confuse people first let's say you, let's change direction now let's say north was this way and your compass is pointing this way in fact this is north here where I'm actually pointing uh, magnetic north by the compass so my magnetic arrow, the red arrow is actually truly pointing this way that is north for me I know that true north and I know that the magnetic declination here in New Zealand where I currently am is approximately 21 degrees east or easterly okay which means that I know that true north is a quarter of a turn to my left if I do a quarter of a turn to my left that would be true north okay so if I wanted to head in a true north direction that's the direction I'm going to head so I could use the compass to help me to find true north okay so um, now if it's a westerly uh, declination doesn't matter where in the world you are if you have a westerly de declination uh, you would do the opposite to that so let's for example let's say I had a westerly declination um, and my westerly declination was pointing in this direction okay then what I want to do let's say my declination again was 21 degrees uh, west, um, I would move, if I wanted to find true north, I'd just do a quarter, quarter of a turn, okay, of 21 degrees to the right, okay, and I would find uh, true north, which would be pointing out in that direction, okay, so that's how we can also find um, true north using um, a compass if you wanted to do so. Now most people don't necessarily need to do that. If they've got a compass they actually want to find uh, magnetic north okay and use the compass uh, in that if they're that way inclined uh, but if for some reason you did need to find um, a user bearing going on a true bearing uh, not a magnetic bearing um, then that's how you could do it using a compass. Okay so I think that's really about it, okay, um, there are some people that would say, you know, um, you know, you can use a, uh, look at the moss on a tree and um, uh, the, the, the side that the moss grows and stuff like that, well, I've been out in the bush many, many times, I've been in the jungles and I can tell you right now, moss grows on 
all sides of the trees. Um, you, you, there's no way that you can find direction from that. What they're basically uh, linking that to, and to some degree you can use it for other things though, um, which I have seen occasionally in my time. If we go back to this here, and let's just say for example that <clears throat> the sun rises in the east, okay, and in New Zealand or in the South Pacific, it rises in a north easterly direction. That means that it's uh, the sun is sort of more over to the northern side of the uh, planet. So it, grow, it, 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 it rises up in a north easterly direction, not direct north, uh, east, should I say. Okay, it's more of a north. If I was to be more accurate, it would be sort of a north northeast. It would be sort of a north east east. Uh, a northeasterly direction, more on the easterly side. Now, let's get rid of this. Okay, now this doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Let's say you've got some trees growing. Okay, le 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 let's say these are all your trees here. Alright. Now the trees and plants and everything else, they grow from the sun. All right, they need the sun. That's one of the things they need to grow. And what you'll find is as the sun rises in the east, it rises in the east here and it comes up, all, right, all the trees and the plants have been through the night without any sunlight. They want that sunlight. And so they are going to... They're going to focus on grabbing that sun, um, as much sunlight as they can, as soon as it comes up. Okay, because it's like if you were freezing cold at night time, you're going to be waiting in the morning for the sun to come up. As soon as the sun comes up, you're going to be out there trying to get as much sun onto your body to warm you up. Okay, it's like that. These trees need that sunlight to live. Okay, um, and it would be like you having hypothermia, and in the first thing in the morning, you know the sun's coming up, you're you're so dying for that sun to come up. You need that sun to come up to warm yourself up, to survive, to live. The trees are the same. They need that sunlight to live. And what they will do is you'll find that there'll be more leaves growing on one side of the tree, okay? And it'll be on the north northeastern side, okay? So it'll be a lot more bright. Um, we'll take some of these ones off on the left-hand side. Okay, and so some of the trees will have more growth on the right right hand side um, than on the left hand side of the tree. And on the right hand side, I'm talking about pointing in a northeasterly direction, not directly east, but in a sort of a northeasterly direction. Okay, um, sometimes the trees they're so badly in need of that um, that sun; they want that sun so badly. They will actually bend. They will actually bend towards the sun. Okay? They'll actually bend towards the sun and try and um, get as much sunlight as they possibly can. Alright? They'll sort of bend in that direction. So I don't see it very often, but if you look at the landscape of the land, you will. You'll, sometimes you'll see all the trees pointing in a certain direction to try and gather that sun up in the first thing in the morning. Okay, But that would be just like um, in addition to confirming uh, where you are. Because if you see the sun coming up in the east, you already know that's the east. You don't need to really work off the uh, trees and things like that. That kind of thing would only be sort of a bonus if you couldn't, if it was completely overcast and you couldn't see where the sun was, you'd be going off sort of things that are going to give you a hint as to where the uh, sun is coming up, okay? But you, these are not a guarantee, okay? Now, I'm just going to go back to one little thing that I forgot to mention. Um, I might have mentioned it, but I wasn't, uh, didn't mention it indeed much, uh, talk about it much, and that was the moon. I'm pretty sure that I said... Uh, that the moon comes up at 
um, you can use the the way of finding north that I showed you, I would say 95% of the time. Okay, 95% of the time you can use the moon to find north. And the reason why I say that, and this, this may sound a little bit weird, but it's very true. 5% of the time when you look up into the into the into the sky, okay at night and you see the moon the moon's on the wrong side all right believe it or not you can check it out for yourself the moon is on the wrong side so generally the moon should be coming up in the east and it should be coming up uh, when it gets dark okay as soon as it gets dark the moon should start to rise all right and by about midnight okay let's just go back to the sun the sun rises in the east right let's say it's rising at eight in the morning and it's coming up by 12 o'clock noon, approximately. It's up in the mid, middle of the sky. And at the end of the day, at night time, whether whatever time it is, it might be 6, 7 o'clock at night, 7 p.m., it's going down. In general, the moon does the same thing. The moon rises up, let's say it's uh, 8 o'clock at night, 8 p.m. The moon rises up in the east. By about midnight, it should be around about the centre and by about 7 a.m. in the morning, it's going down, okay? And so when it does this, we can use the moon when it's got its like, you know, it's there like that, and you can tell that that's, that's north, and it keeps coming over, and the moon's sort of changing, uh, you know, because it's going up, and at that time of the night, you zoom down, and that would be north, and over here, it would be like that, and... You'd zoom it down and that would be north and so on. Okay. And, but there's sometimes when the moon comes up, it's in the wrong place. It might be 9 o'clock at night and the moon should be over here. 9 p.m. at night. The moon should be over here facing down that way. But I'll look up and at 9 p.m. at night, the moon's over here. Right, and uh, sometimes it's not pointing to north. It's not actually pointing that way. It's like it's like in a real weird weird place or something like that, where it's pointing in a real weird place, real weird direction. Okay, uh, from what I can remember. But sometimes the moon is not where it should be. Sometimes it's supposed to be over here, but you'll end up seeing it over here. Okay, uh, I shit you not. Okay, um, and what you got to do is every now and again look up at the moon know where it should be and then sometimes it's in the wrong place and I have no idea why okay it's just, it's just weird all right it's just really weird and sometimes I'll, if somebody else is around I'll say to them hey look the moon's in the wrong place and they'll sort of look at me and they'll just go oh yeah but they don't know <laughs> I'm sure they don't <laughs> they've got no idea okay um, fascinating thing is about our sun rising in the east setting in the west and, and and using it and the moon rising in the east and setting in the west and using it um people have been on this planet for you know 20 30 40 50 60 years 70 years and they don't even know this stuff okay they, they, because they're not taking note of what's happening around them which is really weird but anyway um yeah, so these things here will give you, uh, help to give you direction. But just be aware that for the moon, 95% of the time it's accurate and you can use it. Um, and uh, sometimes it's, uh, the moon is in the wrong place. And uh, it may not give you the right um, direction when you do that. But this is where you can use other methods of finding true north. Okay, you can use other constellations. You could use a compass if you needed to. Um, compass is always your best bet. Um, but there are um, other ways of uh, doing it. Anyway, um, I hope that uh, helps some people to understand uh, True North a little bit better and how to find True North. Um, there's different methods, different ways, and um, bit of a bit of a quick bit of a quick one. But I think it will help you out, um, especially if you don't have a compass and by all means practice it you know when you go out uh, practice it 
practice using a uh, you don't even need a new you don't even need to use a watch with watch you know with the hands on it like the 12 the hour hand and the minutes hand and whatnot um, and whatnot you could use a, 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 a digital compass okay like I've got I got a digital compass but if I see that I see the time I'd go let's say let's say what well, the time now is uh, 240 okay um, yeah, 240 so let's say I see the Sun here i would just go okay point 12 o'clock to the Sun all right and I'd say that's three o'clock out to my right do this I'd point the 12 let's say the Sun is up there in that direction I'd point the. I'd say point 12 o'clock at the Sun all right I don't need to have a 12 o'clock thing on my watch I know it's 240 in the afternoon point 12 that way towards the Sun three o'clock is directly out to my um, to my right hand side okay it's now 240 so I'll just take that in a little bit okay because it's 240 Okay, pointing at the, about the 240 mark, and between here, here, and here in the middle, that way is true north. So I'd head that way if I wanted to head in a true northerly direction, and if I wanted to head in a magnetic direct magnetic north direction, and I didn't have a compass, I would know that if I knew the magnetic declination was 21 degrees east, I'd just turn slightly quarter right okay slightly quarter right and I'd be heading in a magnetic north direction if I was living in a country or a place in a country where it was a, um, a magnetic westerly direction okay and I knew it was let's say 21 degrees or 30 degrees or whatever I'd do a slightly left turn okay and I'd head in a um, magnetic westerly direction all right magnetic north would be that way instead okay so hopefully that helps and um if you liked it put thumbs up um subscribe comment and um hopefully we'll see you on the uh, next video take care bye bye